let's have a look at the most straightforward electrostatic actuator, uh, which is a parallel plate actuator. So here you can see a um, uh, typically consists of two electrodes, of which one is fixed and the other is movable. So in this case, we have the top electrode uh, being uh, hanging on the mechanical spring system and such so as being movable, and the bottom electrode uh, being fixed. You can also see that I have put an insulator layer on one of the two electrodes. And this is necessary because otherwise, if there's no insulator and the electrode closes, you get a short circuit. Uh, there's also an air gap G here. And uh, if we put a voltage at the moment, the voltage V equals zero, <clears throat> then you can see there is a then there will be an equilibrium situation where the mechanical spring is at rest and you have a, a starting air gap G. But when I now start uh, putting on a increasing my voltage here, what I do is I create of course an electrostatic force and I'm starting to pull this electrode downwards. At the same time, the spring force will pull the electrode upwards and they will come to some kind of equilibrium where we can see that the spring force increases linearly with the displacement and the electrostatic field uh, uh, force increases uh, quadratically with the decreasing displacement. Mm -hmm. So I increase a little bit more my voltage. Here the point G over uh, one it has traveled one third of the total distance G um, once it has traveled one third, then it comes to this bifurcation point and the whole system uh, flaps down. Now I can further, even further increase my, electro, my, electro, my uh, electrostatic potential. And of course my electric field here uh, will even further increase, but nothing will happen anymore. The spring force will be constant and of course they have a, um, the contact force between the two electrodes of course increase. They will be pressed together harder, but nothing moves anymore. So then I can start decreasing my uh, voltage, and of course my um, my electrostatic force will decrease, but nothing happens. Now I can decrease it even further, and now I have decreased it below the pull-in voltage. So the pull-in voltage was where I had the first time the snap down of the electrode. Now I can uh, decrease my voltage below that voltage, and you may expect that now the system releases, but it doesn't. And why is that? Well, that's because we're in a different situation. The air gap here is really, really small. Oh, actually, it's zero. The air gap is zero. So the and but the electrostatic force is still very large because the the electrodes are so close to each other. So even if I go below the original pull-in voltage, my electrode does not separate. So I'll have to decrease it even further, and I will have to decrease that value to the value just below the spring force. The, the spring force. So then I have a V release. So I have a pull-in and I have a release voltage, and now. Uh, I can further decrease and I see that my uh, electrode will go back to its original state. So I see that I have a hysteresis curve. In the blue this is the closing voltage with a pull-in voltage and in the red is the opening voltage and you have a release voltage. And um, So that means that I have in operating my parallel plate uh, actuator I have actually two regimes. I have a regime where I can control the movement of my uh, electrode more or less uh, uh, precisely, and that is within the. Uh, so I can move my my electrode precisely in the first one third of the air gap. So I can move it up and down there and put it in a certain specific uh, position depending on the electrostatic force. However, if I want to the 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 distance between one third and the full gap, that is a forbidden zone. Oh, that is not an unstable zone. It's not forbidden. It's an unstable zone. So I can never have my electrode there in a fixed position. Then it will either be moving up or it will be moving down. Yeah. Um, so I have two regimes. Either I have a linear control or I have an on-off control. And the on-off control is, of course, if I go over the pull-in voltage. And the, and the linear control is if I stay below the pull-in voltage. Um, 